this video, we've been asked to prove that these trigonometric equations are true. And they look pretty messy right now because they are. The point of this is to show that the left-hand side is equal to the right-hand side. And we're going to use what we know about trigonometric functions and their relationships to one another to manipulate these equations. So for example, starting with this first equation, sine of theta over cosine squared of theta is equal to secant of theta times tangent of theta. So the first thing we want to recognize is that over here on the left-hand side in the denominator, we have cosine squared of theta. So really, we could rewrite that. It's just two factors of cosine multiplied together. So we could rewrite this as cosine theta times cosine theta. And then what we could do is multiply both sides by cosine of theta, which will essentially move one of these factors from the left-hand side to the right-hand side. So if we multiply both sides by cosine of theta, then this one disappears and we move cosine theta over here. Now the reason that that's nice is because all we're left with on the left hand side is sine over cosine. And we know that sine over cosine is the same thing as saying tangent. So we can replace this whole left hand side with tangent of theta is equal to and then what we have left over here on the right. So secant tangent cosine. Now if we divide both sides by tangent, we'll remove this tangent function over here on the right, and on the left, we'll have tangent theta divided by tangent of theta. Well this fraction of course is 1, so what we get is 1 equal to secant theta cosine theta, and we actually know that secant and cosine are reciprocals of one another. So for example, secant of theta is the exact same thing as 1 divided by cosine of theta, and cosine of theta is the same thing as 1 divided by secant of theta. So for example, if we say 1 is equal to, and we replace secant of theta with 1 over cosine of theta, which is the same thing, now what we see is that we can get cosine of theta to cancel from the numerator and denominator, and what we get down to is 1 equals 1. And of course, this equation we know is true, 1 is always equal to 1. So we've proven that the original equation is true. So we're going to try to apply a similar stream of logic to this second example here. We have 1 minus cosine of theta, all divided by sine of theta, is equal to cosecant of theta minus cotangent of theta. So the first thing we'll do is we'll multiply both sides of the equation by sine of theta. That's going to get sine of theta to cancel from the left-hand side, and we're left with 1 minus cosine of theta is equal to sine of theta times this whole right-hand side. So cosecant of theta minus cotangent of theta. Now if we distribute the sine of theta across this whole right-hand side, we get sine theta cosecant theta minus sine theta cotangent. Theta. So we just distributed that across this binomial. Now in the same way that secant and cosine are reciprocals of one another, sine and cosecant are reciprocals of one another. So sine can actually be written as 1 over cosecant. So if we have 1 over cosecant of theta times cosecant of theta, this whole thing will get the cosecants to cancel. That's just 1. So what we have here is 1 minus cosine of theta is equal to 1 minus sine theta cotangent theta. Now cotangent of theta is the reciprocal of tangent, so cotangent of theta is equal to 1 over tangent of theta. So we can replace cotangent with 1 over tangent theta. We also know that tangent of theta is equal to sine over cosine. We even used it over here, we said sine of cosine was equal to tangent. So instead of tangent, we'll write sine of theta over cosine of theta. Now here we have 1 divided by sine of theta over cosine of theta, or 1 divided by a fraction. So instead of dividing by this fraction, we can actually multiply by its reciprocal. So if we rewrite this to just clean it up, we get 1 minus sine theta, and then we're multiplying by this 1 over sine of theta over cosine of theta, but instead of dividing by sine of theta over cosine theta, we are going to multiply, so 1 times, the reciprocal. So we flipped it upside down, cosine theta, sine theta. Well, of course, multiplying by 1 doesn't have any effect, 
and now we have sine of theta in the numerator and sine of theta in the denominator, and those are going to cancel with each other. So all we're left with is cosine of theta. So what we see then is 1 minus cosine of theta is equal to 1 minus cosine of theta. And if we wanted to, we could simplify this further and say 1 is equal to 1. But obviously we've proven 1 minus cosine of theta is always going to be equal to 1 minus cosine of theta. So getting the exact same value on the left-hand side and the right-hand side is what proves that the equation is true. And as you can see, we were able to do that with both examples. Could you use some extra help with math? Click the button to head over to calculusexpert.com. It's where I've collected and organized all of my best resources, including exclusive videos, notes, quizzes, and even formula sheets. It's the perfect resource whether you're struggling, or if you want to take your learning further, or even if you just want to save yourself some time studying. So check it out, because I know it'll help.